guys, I'm Mike and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we do a lot of arcade stuff here, so if you're new, you're into arcades, you're into tinkering and doing some of your own repairs, uh, take a look at some of my content. We got some good stuff going on and it's a lot of fun. Uh, leave me a comment, I love to hear from people. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate it and you think it's good work. Give me a thumbs down if you think it sucks. Um, and if you're feeling really good, give me a sub. So we always appreciate that. Today, we're talking about metal slug. More specifically, we're talking about metal slug conversion cartridges. And welcome to part three of my series on that. This is my third metal slug conversion cartridge and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Metal slug has been in the news a lot lately. Bitmap Books just released Metal Slug The Ultimate History. And that just dropped, I just got it in the mail the other day. And you know, it's, I think it's stirred up everybody's emotions. Everybody's talking about Metal Slug. Everybody busted out their Metal Slug to, to play it and, uh, and get those good feelings back. And I said, man, now is the time to drop part three of the video. So here we are. In part one of the video, we opened up a Japanese version Metal Slug conversion cartridge. I didn't know what to expect with it. We opened it up and it was a very low quality conversion cartridge, uh, complete with EPROMs and also some leftover Samurai Showdown 2 chips that the creator was just too lazy to unsolder. In part two, we had legitimate mask ROMs taken from a Metal Slug MVS cartridge, but incorrect Samurai Showdown 2 circuit boards, what they call the CHA and PROG circuit boards. So we were close, we were close. It was a pretty good conversion, but uh, not spot on. Well, today we may be changing that. So we're talking about this one. This is my newest acquisition. And this one claims to be not only legitimate mass ROMs, but also the correct circuit boards, the correct PCBs, which is rare, you know, it's rare to find that combination of the correct circuit boards and the correct mask ROMs. After doing a little bit of research, I found out that there's actually only 18 other games that use the same combination circuit boards, the, the correct CHA and PROG boards. So you can tell that the, the creator of this, you know, he had to go above and beyond to, to get this. He, you know, you can't just go out and get a cheap set of circuit boards to, to create a copy like this, you know, and, and therefore, you know, the price reflects that you're going to pay more as opposed to the cheaper, you know, EPROMs or just having mask ROMs by themselves on, on the incorrect circuit boards. So you're going to pay a premium for quality. Um, the flip side of that as a loyalist is you have to be careful because when you get to this point of realism, where now you have the same boards and you have the same mask ROMs, I mean, you don't want this to get in the wrong hands and try and have somebody sell you, you know, a fraudulent game. You know, Metal Slug, this game just recently actually sold, not this specific one, but I'm saying the real deal, Metal Slug, just recently sold on eBay. This is the first time I've ever seen it listed on eBay. And I think it went for like $7,500 which is actually, uh, actually I, it went for a lot cheaper than I thought it was gonna go for. I, I assumed it would go for well over 10. But you know, it was, it was fascinating to see, you know, the true market value of what Metal Slug goes for because normally, you know, Metal Slug is such a rare AES game, you only really see it sold, you know, from, you know, collector to collector in a private sale. You're not really gonna see it on the open market like eBay just because it's such a risk that it might be fraudulent or whatever. So coming back to this guy, you know, you don't ever want something like this to get in the wrong hands and have somebody sell it as a legitimate thing. Now, thankfully you'll see shortly once we open it up that any true collector will know right off the bat that this is not legitimate. So we'll get to that. I don't want to be a spoiler. Um, we will get to that. So hang in there guys, enjoy the video, and we're gonna head down the basement, we're gonna crack this open, we're gonna have some fun. All right guys, so we got a package. Um, we're gonna be doing an unboxing here, all right? 
and let's let's get going with this. A lot of bubble wrap. We like we like the bubble wrap. Oh, Nelly, get this out of here. All right, guys, here we go. All right, so just got this in the mail, guys. Another metal slug conversion cartridge. And you can see this one is worn a little bit. This is not a brand new one. So you can see the artwork. Artwork looks pretty good. Maybe a little blurry. Nothing significant. Let's open it up. Open this case up here. What we got? Got manual. All right. Get the cartridge out of here. Ooh, this guy did a nice job back in this case. Nice SNK with the snap lock. That's hilarious. Box looks good. I tell you, not bad. Let's take a look at the manual here. Tell you what. This one looks damn good. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Everything so far is looking really, really legit. I have conversion cards where all this text is blurry. This is like nice and sharp. Controls. Love the artwork. Marco. I tell you, so far, I'm pretty impressed. Color looks great. Let's look at the cartridge. Now this label, might be hard to tell in the video, but the label looks like it might, might be a little blurry, the label, if you come in close. Yeah, you could see it if you get up there real close. Sorry for the glare, guys. It's got some wear. It's been played, that's for sure. You could see the edge connector. One of them is white. One of them is almost a tan white, and one of them is green. Probably the boards are taken from two different games, if I had to take a guess. So before we open it up and check the boards, I'm just gonna clean the pins with the one-up card, guys, and then I'm gonna take it upstairs and plug it in my AES just to make sure everything is good. So stay tuned, I'll be back upstairs. Here we go, let's give it a shot. Okay. So good. All right, let's get in here. Mission one, start. Track. 
you. The risks of getting a conversion card. Wow. All right, guys. So you can see the audio was off, which is actually pretty a pretty common mistake with these conversion card results. Hear that? You hear how it's missing it? Looks like it's missing a track. Let me just double check that it's not the that I did wrong here. It's a quick little addition to the video, guys. I popped in another conversion cartridge I have, um, and there is no sound issues, so definitely nothing to do with my TV. I would like to be able to fix it and get the sound working properly if I can. If it's an easy fix, you know, if it's a jumper or, if, or you know, one of the uh, factory jumper connections that's not enabled or disabled or whatever. I don't know a ton about this stuff. I'm kind of kind of a novice when it comes to uh, how they build these things. But if anybody has any advice, hit me up. So you can see guys that right off the bat, not happy. The music is not right. Um, and I was, I was pretty upset about this because you know, you pay, you know, you pay for quality when you get these conversion cartridges and this one wasn't cheap. You know, this was, you know, I wanted something, you know, I wanted a replica of Metal Slug as close as you could get. And I paid for that. So when the music wasn't right, needless to say, I was a little bit upset. I contacted the seller, I touched base with him. It turned out he actually was the manufacturer of this conversion cartridge, which was, which was good to know and I was very happy that he was because I could talk to him on more technical terms rather than just some Joe Schmo who's selling his copy of Metal Slug. So uh, we went back and forth, I explained the issue, you know, how the music just was off, blah, blah, blah. At first, we both kind of thought it was one of those jumpers that I've talked about in previous videos. Um, you know, you have to enable or disable certain jumpers to get these boards to work properly when you're doing conversions. And if you leave something out, you may have, you know, corrupt graphics and or sound. So he, you know, told me, he said, hey, listen, you know, crack the carts back open and take a look at those boards and see what the jumpers look like. All right, guys, so I contacted the seller and we're gonna try opening it up and we're just gonna double check the jumpers that everything's configured properly. And if everything checks out, then I'm most likely gonna have to send it back to him for repair. All right, guys, so we're using this little tool right here to pop open these AES cartridges and it's called a metal spudger and it's just a little prying device because there's clips that hold down hold the cartridge together and you got to kind of pop them out so there's there's one in the front here there's one like right over here there's one up here and same thing on the other side so I'm gonna try and pop this open without doing any damage and I'm never good at this. And I got a couple of them, it just makes it easier. That side feels like it went. It's never easy to get these things. Okay, I think we got it. Now, if you want to protect your label, you really don't want to open it any further than that because what'll happen is you'll you'll crease the label as it flips open. So let me see if I can pull this thing out now without going any further. Okay, let's see. So what we're looking at here, 
we are looking at, the board is a CHA256RY. And this is the correct CHA circuit board for metal slug. All right, that number, the CHA256RY. This is the correct board. So what makes this conversion cartridge special is that not only does it have the mask ROMs, the correct mask ROMs taken off of a metal slug MVS cartridge, it also has the correct AES circuit boards, which is a rarity because it makes it more expensive to produce. I guess the trade-off for having the correct boards is that the solder job is not that great. Yeah, definitely not a factory solder job, guys. But you know what? That's a good thing. I mean, it makes it pretty obvious that this is not original. So this board over here, this is the PROGBK1Y board. And again, this is the correct circuit board for metal slug. All the jumpers seem to be set up properly by the seller. I also checked the other board and it looks fine as well. So it looks like I'm gonna be shipping this back to him. He said he has a replacement boards ready to go. He's gonna to send to me. So hopefully we could just do an even swap and hopefully take two will work out a little better. It's now approximately a week later. So you can see we had a little bit of an issue and I was kind of at a loss. You know, I, I didn't know if he was gonna be receptive to a return. You know, a lot of people with electronics, you know, don't wanna do that. So, I mean, I was getting ready to reflow the chips or, or whatever. And he actually was super cool. He said, listen, you know what? Send it back to me. Send me just the circuit board. Send them back to me and I'll see what's going on. So I sent it over to him and he responded by saying he could find nothing wrong. And I said, what is going on here? I said, I'm telling you, the audio is not right. I will literally send you video of the audio being off. So after him playing around with it for a little bit, he finally got it to do the same thing it was doing over here. And he told me that it turned out to be a chip was failing, an, uh, what they call an M1 chip, which I guess handles the background music. Uh, you know, I'm not an aficionado on this uh, stuff, so so I'm taking his word on it. But he he had another set of boards ready to rock. Um, I guess he was getting ready to make another conversion anyway. So I confirmed with him. I said, hey, listen, you know, big reason I got this was because the circuit boards match up to the original metal slug. I want to make sure that that's still the case. He goes, nope, everything's the same. Don't worry about it. Um, and we did a quick turnaround. He goes, listen, send it out to me two day mail priority. I'll send mine out to you today. And you know, this will be, you know, this will be taken care of within a week. So boom, I took the circuit boards out, uh, packed them up, mailed them out. He shipped me the new ones and they just got here. So we're going to continue the video, uh, with the new circuit boards, the unboxing and trying out the new stuff and see if it works. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So here comes the rest of the video, enjoy. It is about a week later and we're back. I ended up shipping the circuit boards back to the seller. He looked it over, at first he couldn't find an issue. Eventually he said the M1 chip had it, had a problem. There was, there was something, either it was failing or something was going wrong with the M1 chip which was affecting the background music. Either way, he sent me a completely new board set. So we're gonna open it up, we're gonna clean the pins, we're gonna pop it back in the cartridge, and we're gonna test it out. So let's see what we got. Goodness. 
Now a big, a big issue I had with this guy when I con when I spoke with him about this, because apparently he is the manufacturer of these boards. And I said to him, I said, you know, I want to make sure that the CHA and the PROG boards, I wanted to make sure they were the same. And they are. I'm just taking a look. And again, I mean, it looks, it looks beautiful. These actually even look cleaner than the last set. One of the boards was warped on my last set. Maybe that had to do with it. So let me bring it in here and I'll show you guys that M1 chip. Over here, looking at the uh, the CHA board. Right here, you can see the M1 chip. So supposedly that was the issue on the last one. Uh, just quickly looking at the board. I mean, it looks pretty good. The only thing, just like the last one, the only thing that's the dead giveaway is the solder job. See if I can get this to focus. You can definitely tell, you know, it's not factory soldered, which is the only giveaway on this board. I mean, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Let's take a look at this one. Let's grab the cartridge and see if we can get it back together. Stand by. Here's the cartridge. It's just empty right now. I gotta open this puppy back up. Okay, here we go. nerve-wracking taking these things apart. Looks good, guys. Fingers crossed. Let's head up there. Head back up to the game room. I got my little CRT set up on the floor. And we will we'll give it a go and we'll see what we get. All right. Here we go. Here's the test, metal slug. Take two, a week later. Boom. All right, the TV. Oh man, I hope this works. All right guys, let's do it, ready? Okay, here we go. Let me get this volume up nice. Metal slug. All right, so far, so good. Let's see what we got. Metal slug. So far, it sounds good.
Um, that's pretty much gonna do it for this installment in the Metal Slug conversion cartridge series. So, the new Metal Slug is working. Circuit boards are okay, the music is good, everything is functioning great, no more issues. The seller was, uh, the seller was a good guy, uh, very, very helpful, very willing to, to go the extra mile to quickly resolve the issue. So I want to give a shout out to him. And I'm very happy with the cartridge. The, the only imperfections that I really see is the label quality on the cartridge is is a poor printing and uh, and not that it's a bad solder job but I mean you can tell it's not a factory job so not not really knock against it but uh, I would say you know this is this is as close as you're gonna get to the real thing guys stay tuned there will be a part four where we take a look at another metal slug conversion. Uh, this one is going to have a little bit of a twist. So, stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Do you have a metal slug conversion cartridge? Let me know below in the comments, guys. Take it easy. Over. Uh, specifically talking about the metal slug boards I I did some research and come to find out that there there's only 18 other games that use the same combination so excuse my cat with the tail going here